Welcome to a MCC EE Tutoring Services video providing you with all your USMLE and Medical Council of Canada exam content needs. As always, check the description below to skip ahead to the section you want. You can also check out my website for more tools to help you do well on your exams. This presentation will cover babesiosis, microbiology, epidemiology. Babesiosis is caused by Babesia microti. Compared to the other tick-borne illnesses, it is a parasite that resides in red blood cells. It is transferred by ticks and blood transfusions with a mouse reservoir. That means that the vector is, you guessed it, I scapularis. Big surprise, eh? For exams, Massachusetts is a common area for Babesia macrati. So if you see that term, think babesiosis. Clinical signs and symptoms. Like many illnesses, the signs and symptoms are very nonspecific, such as fever, myalgias, headache, shortness of breath, night sweats, and more specific, such as hemoglobinuria and hemolytic anemia. Many conditions put people at risk for severe hemolytic anemia and death. These include pregnancy, asplenia, medications such as infliximab or impaired Im immunity, and the elderly. Diagnosis is based on the clinical syndrome and a blood smear showing ring forms and the Maltese cross sign. If these signs are absent, you can also try PCR. Treatment is doxycycline. Actually, that is a lie. This is one of the cases of tick-borne illnesses that does not use tetracyclines. Instead, for mild or moderate disease, etavonaquam, 750 mg POBID, and azithromycin, 500 mg, for day one, followed by 250 milligrams PO daily. Severe disease should be treated with clindamycin, 600 milligrams POIV Q6 hours, with quinine, 650 milligrams PO Q6 hours. Treatment of severe disease, such as when parasitemia is greater than 10%, or there's SIRS, or severe anemia, exchange transfusion can be used. Let's do some practice questions. So a 27-year-old hunter comes to the ER and says he has not felt well since he came back from a hunting trip four days ago. He has had a cough, shortness of breath, fever, and headache. In his armpit is an ulcer with a black eshkar at its center. What is the culprit organism? If you need a moment to think, pause the video right now. The answer is B, Francisella tularenis, causing tularemia. I have not covered this illness yet, but the point is, be sure to eliminate the possible answers. We just covered Babesia, and it does not cause an ulcer with black eshkar. And if you watch my anaplasmosis and Lyme disease videos, they also both pre present differently, which eliminates both B and C. This leaves A, which I've also not fully covered, but as I said in the anaplasmosis video, it presents similar to anaplasmosis and has a characteristic rash. Practice question number two. A 19-year-old comes back from a camping trip that occurred two days ago and now is brought to the ER by ambulance. He is unable to move his legs. It started with weakness and now progressed to complete paralysis of both his legs. Vital signs are normal and he is without fever. Sensory exam is also normal. A tick is attached to his right popliteal fossa. What has likely caused this condition? Again, if you need a moment to think, Pause the video right now. The answer is C, <clears throat> tick neurotoxin. 
If you recall from the Lyme disease video, tick paralysis is a consequence of tick neurotoxin. The most common cause of this condition is the Dermensoterror tick, or otherwise known as the American dog tick. Who says a puppy has never hurt anyone? In summary, babesiosis is a summer disease with a tick-borne vector Exodes scapularis and with reservoir of the white-footed mouse. It is the only major tick-borne illness that is a parasite and resides in red blood cells. Signs and symptoms are vague and include fever, myalgias, headache, shortness of breath, night sweats, and more specific signs such as hemoglobinuria and hemolytic anemia. Severe disease can occur in pregnant women, asplenia, impaired immunity, and the elderly. Diagnosis is clinical plus the finding of parasites in red blood cells with the classic Maltese cross sign or just use PCR. Treatment is with etavonaquone and azithromycin for mild to moderate disease with severe disease treated with clindamycin and kinine. Partial exchange transfusion is reserved for those with greater than 10% parasitemia and severe hemolytic anemia. And always advise people to wear pants, check for new moles after hiking, and wear repellent containing DEET. This has been another MCC EE Tutoring Services production. For a link to the website, see the video description where you can learn more about what MCC EE Tutoring Services has to offer. Please like and hit that subscribe button. Thank you and have a great day.